Hi, this is Vicki Gopher Parnell, and I have come to share a dream with you. It might be somewhat controversial with some people, but I wouldn't be the first one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Just saying. But I ask you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try, test it, as you're called to do. First Thessalonians 5.21 Prove all things. Hold fast to that which you know. 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And when you do the study, get in your Bible, get a concordance, a Thyre's Greek lexicon for the New Testament, or online, and do the word study. Find out, because false prophet does not only mean prophet, False prophet, teachers, evangelists, anybody false that's trying to lead you astray. In, in my understanding of the interpretation of what I was reading. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. This dream is titled, A Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit Dream. Again, you take it to Jesus Christ. You lay it before him. Ask your questions to him because you're supposed to have, if you're a child of God, you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, you're supposed to have a relationship with him and you're supposed to be seeking him for understanding. I release a dream and you go to him for understanding in the truth. If I can share anything like I do sometimes, I will. I'm still seeking and praying on these things too. When I get a dream, when I get a word, when I get, I don't always have a 100% divine revelation. I lay it before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray over it, quoting his word. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and you shall find. Seeking, ask, and you shall receive. Seeking, you shall find. Knock, and the door will be open. Matthew, excuse me. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. I pray thee, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, in there over me, my family, this ministry, my and, and all that pertains to us. In Jesus Christ's name, because there's power in the word. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word go forth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish all I have sent it out to do, all it pleases, it pleases me to do. God's word will go forth and not come back empty. It's full of promise. It have either a blessing or a cursing. It's full of promise. All right, let's pray. Holy Spirit, lead this prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Don't let me speak a word, please. That's not of you. I've laid this before the Lord. I've prayed over it. I've studied it out. I've pulled the scriptures I was told to do. Jesus Christ, have your way. Father God, let your will be done in all things on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I've already prayed against backlash, interference, spying, and such like things. No retaliation. I also pray over this video, Father God, and for all the videos put out by the My Lovely Jesus Ministry and your true children of God, any PDFs, anything we put out, Lord, that it's truly yours. I break all witchcraft off of it, Lord. I break all demonic assignments off of them in the name of Jesus Christ, standing on Proverbs 26, 2, and command them not to return. And Proverbs 26, 2 says, as the bird wandering as the swallow flying, the curse causes shall not come. If you don't give the enemy's attacks and a place to light, to land, and come into agreement with it, it's returned to sender. Package not received or accepted in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Every plot, gin, snare, device, scheme, arrow, device, weapon, gizmo, gadget, technology, and any such other like things, Father God, that you have knowledge of, you have understanding of, in all your existence, past, present, and future, in, in the firmament, outside, everywhere, you exist everywhere, in all your knowledge and your understanding of what they can use, the enemy can use or try to use. Directly, indirectly, randomly. I break, cancel, reverse, nullify, disable, set it offline, send forth codes and new lines of binary codes and software 
programming in the name of Jesus Christ for your good doing of Romans 8.28. For all things work together for good to those that love the Lord who are called according to His purpose. According to your will, Father God, you know what needs to be taken down. You know what needs to stay. I ask that the fire of God be sent down. The hammer of God crushes, crushing some of these the hundreds and fishes of the Lord to go out with bows of steel and arrows of the Lord with lightning, with fire, with poison, whatever needs to be done. Those are all found in the Word of God. I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise. But be it according to you and whatever else, Father God. I bind the spirit of witchcraft, which is the spirit that they operate in. Manipulation, control, and any such like thing and sub-demons. I bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon that's been assigned and sent out on any form of attack. Directly, indirectly, randomly. In all your knowledge, and all your understanding, Father God, in all your existence. I bind them in Jesus Christ's name. And if they're not inside of a person, I'm talking about those sent out into an attack. I bind them and throw them into abyss in Jesus, into the abyss in Jesus Christ's name. Standing on your word of God in Jude 6, which says that they can be bound. The, the fallen angels were bound in everlasting chains. I ask those everlasting chains to be used on these demons as well. And they be reserved here till the time they're thrown into the lake of fire in Jesus Christ's name. With grievous torments and heavy burdens. Stand on on Matthew eighteen eighteen. I hear you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, every assignment of confusion, of heaviness, the spirit of heaviness trying to lay on my mind or on the children of God's mind, the true ones, I break down, I bind I reverse, I tear it down, standing on 2 Corinthians. I cancel it. Yes, Lord, thank you. I cancel it in Jesus Christ's name, canceling all assignments of such type nature, tearing down all strongholds of lies, of delusions, illusions, and such like things, standing on 2 Corinthians 10, 14, for the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ, Second Timothy 1 7, <laughs> for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For well, we have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not confused. I bind every form of confusion and every other kind of type against the mind, brain fog, stupor, and such like that you have knowledge of Father God, you have understanding of in all your existence that they would try to use in Jesus Christ's name, whether it be physical, spiritual, or combined. Physical being their gizmo gadgets, technology, and such like. Spiritual being their witchcraft, woohoo, wahoo, garbage, junk, you know. That stuff in Jesus Christ's name. Whether it be voodoo, mysticism, whether it be, <laughs> you know, whatever, God. It all falls under the same. They operate through summoning demons. Witchcraft. They work in witchcraft. So I bind all of it in the name of Jesus. Every traps and triggers upon me for doing this, you're bound to in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Father God, send this where it needs to go. Let this be done, Jesus Christ, for the glory of Father God. I ask you, send this and do whatever you need to. Lead my every word in Jesus Christ's name. Don't let me speak a word that's not from you. I understand the severity of having blood on your hands. You've been talking to me, revealing it to me finally, and Lord, it makes me tremble in fear, reverent fear, but in fear of knowing your holiness and righteousness. You don't tolerate sin. And I don't want to be disobedient. So help me, Holy Spirit, to surrender my life totally to you, to be in subjection to you, submission to your will, because your will is that of Jesus Christ and his is that of the Father. The Holy Spirit is a spirit that was inside of Jesus Christ. He's going to only lead me closer to Jesus Christ and to the, the truth, which is Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Lord, I give you praise. Send this out where you need it to go, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, I praise you. I praise you, I praise you. Let me say this. There are quite a few verses this time, because in this dream, when the Holy Spirit is speaking about prophetic things, which you'll understand to, to Jesus Christ in one place in this dream, he had me look up, where that was spoken in the Old Testament and then the verse near where it was fulfilled. 
So there's a lot of verses. But again, this is what Jesus Christ has instructed me to do through Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be obedient with his help. I can't do it alone. I can't do anything on my own. I'm the least of the least. That's what I see myself. And I want to be a servant of all. That's my heart's desire. I don't care if I'm known. I was told I would be hated by most. Some would love me. Most would hate me. If I can reach one more for Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter. That's the way you've got to look at it. Because these people that's attacking you, it's the spirit inside them, which is controlled by Lucifer, by Satan, the kingdom of darkness. And you got to focus on who the true enemy is, not these precious people that's deceived or twisted or possessed or those that are savable, those that are Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I did try and test this. I did not write all that down here, but I used, again, the, the questions, praying, lining up with Scripture, the questions from 1 John 4, 1 through 3, 15 through 16, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21. You can get, it lines up how to test and try. And then you can go to John 10, where it speaks of in verse 3, and um, 27, that you hear the Lord's voice. But 3, 4, 5, 14, and 27 all tell you He knows your name, Jesus Christ. He is a good shepherd. He hears you. He knows you. And you hear His voice and you follow Him. There are many voices out in the world. But you have the authority through Jesus Christ to command those voices to be quiet if your life's lined up with His. You're not in agreement with the kingdom of darkness anywhere to where your prayers are not being fully effective. You can speak in authority and command those voices to be quiet. Bind all deceptions and lies and then do your questions as the Holy Spirit leads. And again, there is no retaliation, backlash, interference, spying or any other such like thing for what I'm saying or to any of the people that received this and utilized it in Jesus Christ's name and all his existence, knowledge and understanding. Job 2.28, this is a holy declaration. Hallelujah. Father God, Jesus Christ, I love you. What a dream you have given me. I have tried and tested it, and it's from you. It's another answer to my question. I've been seeking an answer for this one for a while. If the sweet Holy Spirit was the power inside Jesus Christ, my love, then, and he's the comforter, why was an angel sent to minister to him in the Garden of Gethsemane? As found in Luke 22, 39-46. Um, no other passage about him inside the Garden of Gethsemane makes mention of the angel. I do know the angel was there to strengthen Jesus Christ. It says that. So I have been praying to understand the role that Holy Spirit has in our lives and what he really does when we allow him leadership in, our, in every part of, our, of it. What does it mean for him to be the comforter? This dream was about various places in your life, Jesus Christ, near its end. Help me, sweet Holy Spirit, to remember all I was given. Don't let me write a word that's not from you, Father God, Jesus Christ, or sweet Holy Spirit, or, or sweet friend, you too, Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray and ask. I will, daughter of Zion, here is your dream once again. Now look, watch, and write. Thank you, dear friend, I shall. Remember, when you are a child of God and you pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that prayer is effective. The power is inside Jesus Christ's name, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> the devils believe there is God and tremble. James 2.19 used to say demons, it says devils, so now it includes them all. Go figure. In all the, you know, let's do this, it worked to God's good. <laughs> God, you're amazing. Thank you, Lord. My dream began with me observing a group of men dressed as if it were the times of living in the days of the Holy Bible. And it was. It was getting dark outside, so they had with them two lit torches. They had entered an area that appeared secluded. I noticed there, I noticed there are large gnarled trees. Caught my eyes. And there are also large rocks, stones I can see. I watched the group closely. 
They're all men. As the two men with the torches moved to place the torches between the dirt and large stones, I heard a voice speak and say, John, James, Peter, pick up one of the torches and follow me. The rest of you sit here and wait. I go further into the garden to pray. His voice is heavy, as if the weight of the world was contained inside them. I recognize a voice. It was, it's Jesus Christ, my lovely, lovely Jesus. I looked at the group of men as they began to move around to find somewhere to sit and get comfortable. I can see Jesus Christ now after the others have moved away. His brown hair, his mustache and beard, even in the light of the torches and the dimming darkness, I can see hints of rust in it. It's not always seen, but I do see it in a few places here and there. I watched as one of, excuse me, one of the men picked up one of the torches and two others came to stand beside Jesus Christ. I felt these two were James and John, the sons of a thunder, a Zebedee, their brothers. I felt these two were James and John, and the one with the torch was Simon Peter. Although Jesus Christ was going to a more private place to pray, the other disciples, not currently following him, further into the garden appeared to have the understanding it was time for all to pray. I felt in this dream this was something they did often as they followed Jesus Christ, their Lord and Messiah. The small group with my lovely Jesus Christ leading the way walked a little further from the other two, excuse me, the other eight remaining disciples. I knew in this dream from the Holy Bible I read, in real life, Judas Iscariot isn't here because he's already went to betray Jesus Christ and bring the soldiers to arrest him at some point in this night. I have seen all this by vision a long time ago when Jesus Christ radically changed the direction of my walk with him. Still, as I'm observing this, I find it's hard to watch, knowing what's coming. Yet also unable to draw my eyes away from Jesus Christ, who my soul loves so desperately. Here, Peter, I heard Jesus Christ speak softly. The other men stopped quickly, and Peter wedged the end of the torch into a crack created by some nearby rocks. So yes, Peter is the one who was carrying the torchlight. Afterwards, the three men are looking at Jesus Christ as if waiting for further instructions. Simon Peter, James, John, pray. Pray that you enter not into temptation. The hour of trial has come, Jesus said. There was an urgency in my lovely Jesus Christ's voice and a heaviness inside his words. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Great sorrow fills my heart almost to the point of death. He finished saying. Then he turned and walked further into the garden where barely any of the light shone. I watched as Jesus Christ fell to his knees almost immediately and began praying, crying out to Father God. Tears tears came to my eyes as I watched Jesus Christ, my love, crying out in a prayer that seemed so full of inner anguish to his Father in heaven. Father, This cup you've given to me, if it be your will, remove it. If there's another way, take it from me. But nevertheless, your will be done. I watched as he leaned over onto the earth, groaning and crying. Then I saw the shadowy figure of a man leave his body and knelt down beside him and began speaking to him softly, encouragingly. What's going on? I asked out loud. That's Holy Spirit. Why would he leave Jesus Christ's body, especially at such a trying time as this? I am somewhat in shock. 
by this until I heard a voice beside me say, Daughter of faith, of heaven's court, and of Zion. It's not what it appears to be. Then what is it, I ask, as I quickly turned to see who had spoken to me. There beside me, in white, is an angel, a younger-looking man in his, in his features, with long, straight, auburn hair shining ever so brightly. I stared at him momentarily and then cast my eyes back to my lovely Jesus Christ with Holy Spirit's shadowy presence there beside him. I heard Holy Spirit say, You are the Word of God who existed before the foundation of the world. You were created lower than the angels so you could drink this cup of trembling. In its place you will give mankind the cup of salvation when you finish this task. O oh, beloved Son of God, I will not leave you alone to endure this yourself. I heard Jesus Christ let out a groan as his sobs began to lessen. The auburn-haired angel spake softly to me. I could tell he had no pleasure in seeing the suffering of my Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit of God, the anointing also called the Holy Ghost, has not departed from the body of God's dearly beloved Son. He is only appearing this way in your eyes so you can understand how the Spirit of God is the source of power in which Jesus Christ's human half and not the part that is made of his Father, Father's spiritual DNA, um, you would not have understood the conversing that is transpiring if not for the Holy Spirit of God allowing you to see his activities. Although in reality he is speaking from within Jesus Christ, leading him and empowering him in all he should do and will do. So he was letting me see him outside of him so I could understand the conversion between the two. I watched as Jesus Christ, my lovely Lord, slowly lifted himself off the ground. Then he walked to the garden's opening where Peter, James, and John were at. I could tell from the distance they were sleeping. Although the angel beside me and I didn't move from our location in the Garden of Gethsemane, I heard Jesus say with his back toward us, What? Could you not watch and pray for a little while? Simon, are you sleeping? Pray that you enter not into temptation. I see your spirit man is willing, but your flesh is not. I could see the three men trying to wipe the sleep from their eyes as Jesus turned once again to pray some more. I could tell this grievous weight was still upon him as the flesh part of him wanted to live, but he was bringing it under control through prayer and his obedience to Father God with Holy Spirit's help. Jesus Christ began praying once again, dropping his body on the cold ground. I heard deep groans as he prayed. Father, if there's another way, please let it be. But if not, let your will be done. Let this cup pass from me. Father, Father, he cried out. I'm crying profusely. Again, I saw the shadowy figure of Holy Ghost Spirit take on the role of comforter as he embraced Jesus Christ. He reminded him of what the Word of God says and how he would fulfill it. Then I realized this is how Holy Spirit comforts us, not by manipulating our feelings with the numbing of our senses, but by speaking the truth, which is the Word of God, and bringing it up to our remembrance. Remember, Son of God, you are the perfect sacrifice, the only one created who can be offered to redeem mankind. The Holy, Be Holy Spirit said then continued, you alone in the flesh of a man have walked and lived a perfect, sinless life on the earth. You are willing to do this. You chose this and in heaven. Excuse, you chose this end in heaven, for it is written in the scripture of truth. The abandonment by those who you have been given is only for a moment. 
Holy Spirit continued to speak. You're drinking this cup. The cup of fury from the great almighty God of heaven, your father, will also allow me to come and reside inside all who accept your sacrifice for them. I will be with them too. I shall empower them as I am doing with you. By you, the written word. Holy Spirit said in a deep love I could hear in his voice from my lovely Jesus Christ. Son of God, Yeshua, Jesus, you alone can do this. I heard Jesus Christ let out another agonizing cry. Then he said quietly, then he laid quietly on the ground as Holy Spirit continued speaking to him of all that was written and the souls that would be redeemed if he drank this cup of wrath and fury. So the cup of salvation could be offered to the world. I watched as Jesus Christ slowly pushed himself up. His body looks tired from all the emotional crying and praying. He stood up and slowly walked toward the torchlit area only to see the three disciples sleeping once again. Sleep on, he says. And he turned again into the garden and began praying alone. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. I realize now, with his disciples asleep, he was waging this war in prayer by himself. He fell to his knees and began again praying earnestly. Tears flowing freely. He's groaning as he cried out, Father, Father, let this cup pass from me. Father, is there another way? I'm crying heavily again. The angel laid, excuse me, the angel beside me touched my arm and I'm immediately calmed. Once again, I see Holy Ghost Spirit as a shadowy form holding Jesus Christ's face in his hands as his, <clears throat> as his sweat all over him appeared to be like blood drops. Yeshua, Jesus, Son of God, if you don't do this, then sin will never be removed. Death will not be conquered. It must be a total victory for these things to be and for mankind's curse of sin to be broken. You must conquer sin. You must drink the cup, this cup, for it is written, You are the Word, the Son of God made into this body, so you could accomplish this. If you don't do this, then the world's people shall be forever lost to the enemy of the dark kingdom of evil. I could see even in the agonizing state of my beloved Jesus Christ, as sweet Holy Spirit spoke unto him, the war within him began subsiding. Father, Father, let your will be done. I drink this cup willingly. Let it bring glory to your name forever and redemption for your people of this world, he said. Then he fell to the ground, appearing exhausted. Sweet Holy Spirit re-entered his body. The angel beside me said, Now I am needed. He walked over to Jesus Christ and placed his arms around him, even though he still lay prostrate on the ground. I watched as peace came flooding into Jesus Christ's face and strength. I could see the angel ministering to his every need, that of my lovely Jesus Christ. I understood our peace and strength comes from Father God, and the comforting of the sweet Holy Spirit is him speaking the truth of the word of God into us, strengthening our spirit as well as our faith. This is what truth does for us. As I'm standing there watching the auburn hair angel of God hold Jesus closely, I heard Jesus Christ say softly, I love you, Father. Your will be done. Let's finish it so we can put an end to Lucifer's reign of Satan's bondages placed upon our creation. Then the angel of God disappeared from my sight, and Jesus, oh, hallelujah, Jesus Christ rose in great power, strength, and humble might. That's the only words I can find to describe it as, describe it as, he was humble, yet I could sense and feel the glory of Father God emitting out of him. 
it was a glory it was glorious to behold as he headed toward his disciples once again the scene changed i'm standing before a large wooden cross upon it is my savior jesus christ i'm overwhelmed with grief sorrow and even shame because i knew my sins had put him there on the cross also his face is no longer recognizable, nor his body, which all over is beaten and, for lack of better words, it's mutilated. Even his chin area is swollen and bruised, and his beard is no longer present upon his face. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. This was not an easy dream. I am crying uncontrollably. Once again, I felt a hand upon my arm, and strength returns to me as well as God's perfect peace enters my being. It's the auburn-haired holy angel again. He speaks these words to me. It had to be daughter of Zion, as it was written. So salvation and healing could come to your world. Through Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the perfect sacrifice, and the only one who could offer themselves as an atonement for your world. It's almost over, daughter of heaven's court of Zion. Watch and understand how the spirit of the living God inside his son allows all these things to be done through his power for the human part of Jesus Christ. Once again, I watched as Holy Spirit, as a shadowy figure, appeared and speaks. The darkness comes, Yeshua, Jesus, three hours, and then it's almost over. He said, quickly, I heard Jesus Christ let out a sigh and a groan. Suddenly, the sky starts dimming and everything goes dark. I looked up and I cannot see the sun. Everyone was quiet. Then after a few minutes, I felt the angel's hand once again on my wrist. I heard him say, For three hours the darkness came. Excuse me. For three hours the darkness comes. From the sixth, the sixth to the arrival of the ninth. Then he pointed to the cross where my beloved Jesus Christ hung in so much tormented agony. I am somehow able to see both the cross and sweet Holy Spirit still as a shadowy figure next to Jesus Christ on the cross. Yeshua, Jesus, Son of God, you're almost finished, but you must bear the full weight of the cup of your fathers, including the drinking of the dregs. You must become sin, meaning the bearer of all the sins of the world. You must bear the weight alone. Your Father, the Holy God of Heaven, will look away from you momentarily because sin causes a separation between him and what it possesses. You must bear this weight so righteousness can be given to those who will come to the Father God of heaven through you. They will come, Son of God, for it is written, This must be done for full atonement to be made. I am here with you, beloved Son of God, to help you through my power inside you. I heard Jesus Christ groan, but then nod his head ever so slightly. My mind immediately went back to seeing him praying in the garden near the inn, saying, I will drink this cup, Father. Suddenly the sky Hallelujah begins to lighten up, yet at the same time I heard my beloved Jesus Christ yell out in an anguished voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I wanted to rush forward, but the angel of God, still holding my arm, held me back. It must be, he said. Then as the sun began shining its light once again, I heard Jesus Christ speak these words, I thirst. I didn't see who lifted up a stick with what looked like a sponge on the end of it and pressed it to my lovely Jesus Christ's lips because my eyes are fully focused on him 
and sweet Holy Spirit always right there with him. So I, I saw it just coming up to him. I heard sweet Holy Spirit say, You must drink of the vinegar, for it is written in the scripture of truth. It's almost over, beloved Son of God. You can now end this. Atonement has been paid for all who will come to you and accept you as their Lord in their hearts. I watched as Jesus Christ then bowed his head. He did take a, a sip. I, I didn't write that, but he did. He bowed his head. I heard him say in a surprising loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Then he raised his head in a triumph and shouted out, It is finished. And within moments he died. I turn, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, I turn to the angel of God and he spoke these final words, the wages of sin is death, Jesus Christ paid the wages for all who will accept him into their hearts as their Lord and Redeemer, in each heart that does the Holy Spirit of God comes and resides inside them also. He is the same spirit that lived inside of Jesus Christ, the Son of God's fleshly body of God and mankind. What you have witnessed is how the Holy Spirit comforts through the scripture of truth. And if you allow him to lead your every step like Yeshua, like Jesus Christ, your example did, you too can become a conqueror and do successful all you have been called to do. This will bring glory to the Almighty God of Heaven, just and true, and allow you, as it is written, to walk in the power of His Spirit, as each has ability to do through Jesus Christ, in whom all power and authority has been given, and with Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit of God being the source of that power. And then I woke. So please take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try it, test it, line it up with scripture, line it up, pray, discern, do all you're called to do. That's for your own safety. That's for your own safety, children of God. Because the enemy is cunning. Cunning. He even has mimicking spirits. What do you think familiar spirits are that's called up, like in a seance, trying to call up the dead people? Spirit of mimicry. Be wise. That's a demon you're talking to. Matthew 26, 36 through 46. Mark 14, 32 through 42. John 18, 1. Luke 22, 40 through 46. I can tell you right there, that's the Garden of Gethsemane scriptures. I know where those are at. And I've written a lot. Just John 1, 1, verse 14. Psalms 8, 1 through 6. Hebrews 2, 5 through 9. Psalms 40, 6 through 8. Hebrews 10, 5 through 10. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Romans 6, 23. Leviticus 17, 11. Matthew 26, 28. Isaiah 42, 1 through 4. Matthew 12, 15 through 21. Psalms 41, 9. John 13, 18. Isaiah 44, 3. John 16, 7. Daniel 9, 24 through 26. That's the promise, that's the prophecy, and also the fulfilling, all in those verses. Galatians 3, 13. Isaiah 53, 7, 1, excuse me, 7, Isaiah 53, 7, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20, Isaiah 52, Psalms 22, 17, hold on just a second, is that just Isaiah 52? Isaiah 52, 14. I thought that was right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Let me write that in here so I don't miss it when I'm typing it. Isaiah 52, 14. Psalms 22, 17. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Matthew 27, 26. John 19, 1. Isaiah 53. That's the only chapter. I knew it had been the whole chapter. Isaiah 53. John 19, 16 through 19. Philippians 4, 7. Isaiah 26, 3. Psalms 69, 21. Matthew 27, 34. Psalms 22, 1. Matthew 27, 46. Isaiah 56, Mark 15, 34, Psalms 31, 5, Luke 23, 46, Psalms 22, 31, John 19, 30, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Matthew 27, 45, Mark 15, 33, Luke 23, 44 through 45, Matthew 28, 18. I ask you to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. And if you will notice, it talks about let this cup, this particular cup, pass from me. Excuse me. When you read about it in, in Matthew, it's in Matthew 22, I think it's the one where it actually means, excuse me, 26. I think it's Luke 20. Because he, he pointed that out to me when I was reading it. And he started giving me all these scriptures. I didn't see exactly where I was. In, in Matthew 26, 39. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Talking about a particular particular cup. Now, when you study in the Bible, there's different kinds of cups. We also know that what this is talking about is the cup of wrath. God's cup of fury, wrath, and trembling. We also know that because Jesus Christ took and drank the cup of wrath, made our atonement, took our place on the cross so that the wrath of God rested on him. He became sin. He bore the full weight of all sin on the cross. We now drink out the cup of salvation. The cup of trembling is, is when you read about it, it's usually it, the, the cups are mentioned. They're cups of blessing or cups of judgment. Cups of blessing means, you know, for example, the cup of salvation. There's very few of them in the Bible. Holy Bible. The majority of the cups in the Bible represents God's judgment and wrath on the world. We have the cup of trembling, even dregs of cup of fury. Psalms 75, 8. Isaiah 51, 17 through 22. Zechariah 12, 2, for example. Cup of wrath. Jeremiah 25, 15. Romans 14, 10. Cup of astonishment and desolation, Ezekiel 23, 33-34. Instead of the cup of wrath, we have the cup of salvation. That is actually mentioned Psalms 116, 13. When you start studying, really studying Psalms and, and, and bringing it back to the prophecies of Jesus Christ, David had a lot of prophetic words about Jesus Christ. Prophecies that have been fulfilled. It's just amazing. So by drinking the cup of wrath, Jesus Christ transformed for his own into the cup of life, the new covenant, the cup of salvation. And again, it's offered to anybody. You have a choice. It's a free gift. But to accept that, for it to be that gift for you, you have to accept it. Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ specified again this cup. We know that it was the cup of wrath, of trembling, of, of sin, of all this. Go to Romans 5, 8 through 9 right quick. As the Lord pointed this out to me again, I've been studying about the wrath because more and more we're not appointed into wrath. I'm just going to say it. 
and I'm I'm pulling the scriptures and I said, Holy Spirit, let me. This is another thing. This is another question. Romans, I mean Corinthians, excuse me. <laughs> Romans 5, 8 through 9. I just love my word of God. Our word of God. Jesus Christ in book form. Okay. This is why we know. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. He took our wrath. He took our place. We're justified. We're no longer held accountable for that wrath because we have been forgiven of our sins. He bore the whole weight of sin. It says he took, he became sin. Now that does not mean he became literal sin because he was sinless. But he became sin as in taking all sin in existence or ever will be in existence upon his body and bearing that load. And having Father God look away. Wow. John 3, 36. This is another verse he led me to again. And, and he keeps leading me back to this one. John 3, 36. He that believeth on the Son, Jesus Christ, hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's who God's wrath is upon you to. And there's more descriptions of who. Go to um, Romans. Go, there's all these verses. The ungodly, the fornicators, the adulterers. Those that, that do not accept Jesus Christ into their hearts. You're still in sin. Your payment has not been made. Therefore, God's wrath will be upon you. And his children that's accepted him, that's living obediently, so their life is without sin. Yes, we sin daily, but we can still live a holy life and repent often, so that we are found clean before him. We're called to clean ourselves up. That's in Second Corinthians. I did not hear people say, no, we're not. We don't clean ourselves up. We're covered by his blood. We are covered by his blood. But you are supposed to be obedient to this word. You're supposed to repent. You're supposed to forgive. You're supposed to, to walk like Jesus Christ did. You're supposed to love one another. If you have an ought against a brother, you're supposed to go to him. 2 Corinthians 7 1. I have three listed here, but there's more. But I, I wanted to get some of the. Uh, there's New Testament and Old. And we clear ourselves up with the Holy Spirit's help, with Jesus Christ's help. It's the only way we can do it. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Reverence of God, holiness in the fear of God. There's a difference between holy fear and terror. Now, we have a holy fear of understanding that if God wanted to, he could sneeze and wipe out this whole world. He could click his fingers. He could think it. But we also have an understanding of his great, great love, his everlasting tenderness, and his long-suffering. Long-sufferingness. But it comes a point when he gets to a done point, such as with Noah and the ark. And even then, he was still long-suffering. Noah, it took, what was it, 120 years to build the ark, something like that. God told him, I'm going to flood this earth, build, build this ark, you know. And God waited till it's done. Thank you, Lord. I hear something. In Revelation 6, I questioned the Lord about this too. It said that he repented that he made man. And that's not the way people are taking it. In Revelation 6, 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for they shall also in flesh yet... See. Wrong one. That's a good one too. 6, 6, 6. 
Genesis 6, 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. If it repented him to where he was grieved, and he's getting ready to destroy them as far as wish he had never made man, he would have wiped them all out more or less, don't you think? But it repented him that he came to this moment in time when he knew he would have to destroy mankind. He repented of it. He repented. He was sorryful. He knew he was coming to this point in time. He knew it would have to. He knows all things. He still is a God of feelings too, but he doesn't let those feelings rule him. Even when he's moved by love, he does everything, you know, in just and in honor and integrity for Romans 8, 28, for all involved. His ways are not our ways. The only way to escape the wrath of God, whether in tribulation or whether it's in current life, is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and then walking the walk. Pick up your cross daily and follow Him. You know, I, I hear people say that when Jesus Christ was carrying His cross and He fell, it's because He was so weak and because of, of the condition. His body was weak, yes, but I know. God does not need anybody. He wants us. My understanding is it was allowed so as a symbolic representation that you have to pick up your cross and follow him. we we'll pray about that. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. If you hear him calling out, or if you're getting a hunger, or if you have a in your heart when you think about it, or or your 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 wrongdoings, your sin is, is coming to your mind, and you keep thinking, I gotta change. Understand this. You don't change yourself before you come to God. You come to, to Father God through Jesus Christ. You come and accept Jesus Christ into your heart, and He'll do the cleaning up. None of us are perfect. If we sin, if we do sin, we have an advocate with the with Jesus Christ, with the Father. What does that mean? Jesus Christ, please forgive me, and his blood covering steps in, and Jesus Christ petitions to, to advocates on behalf of us, speaks to the Father. His blood speaks on our behalf. If you don't know Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Please say this prayer with me. All you have to do is believe and confess because Jesus Christ has done everything else. Your salvation, your redemption is a gift from Jesus Christ. It is not a works. It's not anything you do except believe, confess in faith, believe, have faith in what you're praying. And Jesus Christ will do the rest. He'll come in and wash you clean, and He is a love like no other. He will love you when you feel you're unlovable. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's time to come to Jesus Christ. Please say this prayer. Jesus Christ, please forgive me of all my sins and my wrongdoings, and wash me clean by your precious blood. I believe and confess you are the Son of God who came to earth by virgin birth, born as both God and man. I believe you gave your life for me and shed your blood so I could go free, as you rose victorious three days later. I accept you into my heart as Lord Savior, Redeemer, Master of everything. In your name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's that simple. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is a love like no other. I recommend you get you a hard copy Bible. This is the, the, the KJV I have here. So is this one. <laughs> double, double edged sword, one on each side. <laughs> Praise God. Get it in. I cannot stress 
how important it is to get the word in. You get the word in so Holy Spirit can bring it out. So when you're in the middle of a battle, when, when it seems like every force from hell has been unleashed against you, Holy Spirit can bring up that word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So even when Holy Spirit is speaking inside you, bringing up the word, and that word is coming back into your mind, and you're hearing it even though you've read it, it is going to bring your faith alive. And your, the truth of it will rise up in you because Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth because He was the Spirit, is the Spirit, that was inside of Jesus Christ when He walked this earth. That's why Jesus Christ left so He could send Him down for all of us. What a Savior! <laughs> what a Savior! But it's up to you to walk in holiness with his help. Clean your life up. Because you're supposed to be operating in the fruits of the Spirit. If you're not seeing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life, and that's evidence you have not surrendered fully to his leadership. Try it. Because there's evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm not just speaking about tongues. I'm talking about love, forgiveness, all the fruits of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians 5. Works of the flesh and fruits of the Spirit. If these are not, if you have bitterness in your heart, if you have unforgiveness, if you have um, things like this, that's not of the fruit of the Spirit. That's a work of the flesh. Galatians 5, I'll give an example. But the fruit of the Spirit, this means this is what you should be bearing in your spirit when Holy Spirit's leading, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against there is no such law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we walk in the Spirit, let us also, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In other words, let Holy Spirit lead you. Let us not be desirous of vainglory provoking one another provoking one another. That's very important. Envying one another. Fruits of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are those adultery, fornication, and cleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred. If you have bitterness, you have hatred. Variances, emulations, that has to do with homosexuality. Wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murdering, drunkenness, rebellings, and such like. Of this which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they, <clears throat> excuse me, and they which do such things shall not inherit, excuse me, In Jesus Christ, I cancel that. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is just part of the fruit. I mean, this is a fruit to basic. But it, you've got to be obedient to the word of God. Even if you have anger, it's to be righteous anger. Jesus Christ, when he cleared the temple, that was righteous anger. So... Be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. You have, and, and I'm not just saying by the Holy Spirit alone. You have to have the Word of God too. It takes them both. you got to have the Word of God in you, and you got to have the Holy Spirit. You're led by this Word, but you're led by the Holy Spirit too, who will always line up with this Holy Word of God. Jesus Christ made into this written copy. Jesus Christ made into the flesh. He was the Word of God. Forever settled in heaven. And he is forever settled in heaven. An altar. So when you pray and you seek the Lord and you're trying to study, ask Holy Spirit Jesus Christ to lead you to the truth. Again, pray in Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Or however Jesus Christ leads you. And you'll get your truth. Not from the many different translations. Not from changes. You'll get the actual truth, the, the interpretation, the revelation you're needing from Jesus Christ and Father God and Holy Spirit from heaven. All right, take this to Jesus Christ in a prayer. This is the My Lovely Jesus Ministry. 
Again, my name is Vicki Gilford Parnell. If you want to contact me again, I'm going to say this, only through the Telegram Group Ministry Channel. That is how Jesus Christ has set it up. Those of you that continually reach out trying to contact me, I'm asking you to respect what I have said. It is not just my wish. I am being told by Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ to separate. And I'm not going to walk in disobedience to answer your messages. You should honor what Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is asking me to do. But you try, you test it, and you do that in Jesus Christ's name, as you should. I want to thank everybody for the cards, the prayer requests. I get prayer requests through the mail. I get confirmation through the mail. Sometimes little gifts, donations, all such things. Thank you in Jesus Christ's name. My son and I, we take and we pray and ask Holy Spirit, how do you want this? What do you want? We have several regular people and things that we do we do support, just so you'll know. In addition to preparing for the left for for the end time days left behind. As Jesus Christ leads. I'm still praying about that now since things kind of changed for me. What he wants me to do. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I trust him. See, I understand if I have if I'm preparing and I'm told to buy and this is just an example. One can of food. That would be all I would need because he would multiply it like he did the fish and the loaves. You gotta have faith that Jesus Christ knows exactly what he's doing and you gotta walk in obedience. Might get tired like they did of the man of that one can. <laughs> I don't know where I got that from. All right. I'm wrapping this up. Love you all in Jesus Christ. God bless the end of the blood. Those of you who made yourself my enemy, it was not my choice. You chose. But again, I say thank you. I love you in Jesus Christ. Because of your persecution, your, your running of your mouths, your plots, your gins, your attacks on my life, and all such things, I have grown sweet, uh, closer and closer and have a sweeter relationship with my lovely Jesus Christ, Father God and sweet Holy Spirit. And it has driven me to dig into this word like never before. And I have such a hunger to know all I can because to know it is to know Jesus Christ. So thank you. What you tried to prevent, you helped create. Romans 8, 28 tall. God bless.